Now, today, probably this will be the, our last course today, I will go over cyclotron radiation, Cherenkov radiation, Thomson scattering, and uh, radiation, um, radiation reaction force. So, last time I investigated the Bramshrank emission. So, basically, we have a now nice formula for the radiated energy per frequency per salt angle for a moving and accelerating charge particle. So, last time we derived this nice formula and today we will do the applications. So, n cross n cross beta e to the i omega t n dot r of t over c integrated dt square. So, that represents the uh, emitted radiation per frequency per, uh, per salt angle. If you integrate through the salt angle, you will find that the intensity per uh, frequency. So, basically what we are trying to do, we are trying to obtain a structure for intensity per salt angle per frequency relative to the frequency. So, that is the observational things. You can observe the intensity for a given photon energy and photon energy is nothing but the frequency times the h bar. So, last time I investigated the branch round emission. Now, let us look at the uh, cyclotron now. So, what so we are not to the full derivation because this is uh, time consuming. We need more couple of more weeks to do complete all discussions we are going to do today in detail we need more time. So, basically for the cyclotron radiation we have a relativistic moving charge particle under the uniform magnetic field or non-uniform the radiation pattern is the following. If the charge is moving relativistically and if it is in circular motion, the acceleration towards to the radius of the curvature, but it has the some velocity that is relativistic and let's say that the beta is is relativistic, is close to the speed of light, less than speed of light. So, then the beam pattern is something like this. So, let's say something like this. So, the width of this opening theta is roughly scaled with the gamma factor, 1 over gamma. Gamma is a height number, Lorentz factor. So, if it is non-relativistic, then you have the following structure. For the circular motion, you have the acceleration and the velocity and the radiation pattern is something like this. So, first, let us investigate the qualitative time scale, which will be important in, in the description of the, in the frequency uh, domain. So, what kind of structure we have? If a circulating charge particle under the uniform magnetic field. So, suppose that there is a magnetic field outside or inside the blackboard and suppose that the charge is circulating. So, according to this description, the radiation pattern is something like this, dominated in the direction of the motion and the emitted radiation, when the charge is circulates, 
the emitted radiation pattern should be like a spiral. Okay, so when the charge is rotated, the emission propagates in the vacuum, and this has the width of emission. Therefore, this emitted radiation is a, like a spiral shape, and it has some width. So it has some width. So width is nothing but the, when we see that the width in the detectors, we will see a burst of radiation. So if you set up a detector here, let's say, what will happen? This burst of radiation will pass, we will see a spike in our detectors, then this will be propagated and pass from through the detector and it will have a sound width. Sound width because this radiation has an angular width. Okay? So through the circular motion of the charge, we will determine that the we will see that the, some spikes in our detectors. So, if you call that the, this length is some L0, and if we call that the width is a L, so if you look at the radiation intensity in time, we will see that some spikes, some spikes. So, if you measure that the power as a function of time, what will happen? Nothing happens and when the, the burst of radiation passes, we will have a spike, then it will drop to the zero and then we will have a spike again. This will be continuous. So this time t is nothing but the L0 over c because in the vacuum it, the the information radiation propagates in speed of light and the width of this width of this uh, is T L over C. L is this width. Now let me calculate that this T because when I look at that the intensity per frequency per salt angle uh, I will scale the things relative to the some important frequency, that frequency will be the inverse of this time. Okay, that will be called crit critical frequency. So, idea is the following. This is very simple. Suppose that the charge in, at any point in the curvature, so curvature reduces rho, and here let's say it has the sum cone of emitted radiation. This is, let's say, 1 over gamma. And when the charge is moves, when it comes to some point here, the cone is something like this. And again, this is the width of the cone is, angular width of the cone is 1 over gamma. And if you have a detector here, you will see that the radiation from this point and here. So here to here, you may see a radiation. It's not a good plotting. Maybe this should be plot like this. Maybe this is better. Let me plot li like this. Let me take this a little bit down. So at here, the line of sight of the radiation passes from the detector. From here to here, all of the radiation passes from this detector. And then the, this part is passes through the detector, we can call this as a front edge and leading edge. So let us call leading edge and let us call as a, this as a front edge. So through this small angular distribution, we will see a radiation. Actually, if the, this width of this 1 over gamma, then this angular separation should be 1 over gamma. And let approximately this length, let's say D, this situation is the following. So this is the angular width, and that is the angular width. They are the same, and through this angular width, we are seeing that the radiation here, and I am trying to calculate that the burst time. 
Okay, burst of the radiation. The inverse of the burst of the radiation will be the some critical frequency. So basically, this d is nothing but theta times curvature of the radius, and theta is one over gamma, and so if I'm if I say that the particle is moving with some velocity v, then yeah, I can write that the delta t is rho over gamma over v. It is rho over gamma v. And if I multiply it by the speed of light, let me call c. So c times delta t will be what? C rho gamma v, and that is equal to rho over gamma beta. C v over c is beta. And basically, this is the amount of the uh, which edge. Uh, so that is the radiation emitted from the either from leading or front edge so in particular which could be let us call this the this is the radiation travels from the front edge so this is the radiation travels from the front edge let us call that this uh, distance or, or sorry uh, let us call this as a leading edge so then that is nothing but the travel of this radiation from that point to this point so basically if we call this tank is D So that is the time at which the radiation travels to the, our point of interest. And for the other part, for the other part, we can write the station is in the following. So L, let us call D minus D. So that is for the front edge. So if you call this is D and D minus D will be the dead part. So then we can write that the uh, D is rho over gamma beta and D is, what was the D? D is nothing but theta times uh, rho. Theta times rho is nothing but uh, rho over gamma. So this is corresponding to D, this length. So then the width of the birds could be calculated from here. So that is equal to the, if we take that the uh, rho over gamma parenthesis that will be 1 over beta minus 1. And if you carefully work on this 1 over beta minus 1, that is nothing but 1 over 2 gamma square. You can show this by easily writing the beta is V over C and the high speeds. Uh, this could be the following form. And that is equal to rho over 2 gamma cubed and this is the L and then you can define that uh, some critical frequency at which the passage frequency of the burst that is nothing but C over L so that is nothing but the C over L 
and L is nothing but the D minus small d, and that is nothing but, so if you take the 1 over and multiply by C, you will find that the C over rho gamma cube. So basically, I did this exercise just to have you have feeling about that the burst time. So this is the basic calculation calculation of the burst time. So basically, for the cyclotron radiation, generally, if you look at the, any uh, paper, book, or whatever, you will see that the intensity radiated energy per solid angle per frequency is scaled by frequency over critical frequency. Okay, and the critical frequency is the inverse of the time of the passage of the burst. So basically. <coughs> so the idea is the cone has the width and we can observe the burst time by simple geometry theta is equal to 1 over gamma and the width of the radiation is 1 over gamma. So then you can find that the uh, time at which the radiation we can see. So this is the passage time of the burst of the radiation. So this radiation swaps out and we can observe the radiation and the, the time scale of this burst is nothing but the inverse of the frequency we find this. So when the gamma, gamma is high, the frequency is high. Now let me work on now the how we can calculate that the intensity, so radiated energy per frequency per salt angle of the radiation. Basically we should activate this formula which we derived last time for the circular motion. Now I just put a scaling factor here for the presentation. So I am not going to do full derivation, but I will just give you the basic tools how you can calculate this integral for the uh, for the circular motion and the typical circular motion of the charge is the cyclotron radiation. If you have a uniform magnetic field, charge will be gyrated. If the charges are relativistically moving, it is called a cyclotron radiation. So the geometry is the following. You have to absorb the geometry. We are not going to do detailed calculations. We will just plot the results. The situation is the following. A charge is moving at any location. In any location of the motion of the charge, you can define a curvature of radiation. In particular, take at the uniform magnetic field and circulating charge. So the geometry is the following. So you can have the sum curvature of radius. So the charge is moving, and basically here the velocity. So this is the rho measured from any curvature of radius, then the charge is somewhere here, and the rho is this. Okay, so you are taking the curvature of radius somewhere here, and this is a circular path at any given instant. So basically, what is done here, so this is the situation. So suppose that the charge is moving, okay, in general. You can define at any location of the curvature of radiation. R here or for here. You can define that the rho here, rho here. So any location you can define that the curvature of radiation. This is any, in any instant. It's more general than the cyclotron radiation. So the important thing is the geometry of the coordinates. So basically n is given in here we have we have to calculate n is given as the point of direction of the we observe the radiation given by theta now the, there's some trick here what is the trick 
this motion is divided into two. One is the perpendicular to the uh, motion and the other is given something E parallel is something like this. So basically they are all mutually orthogonal to each other. If you call that the N on the exit plane and E perpendicular along the y direction, therefore if you call this along the exit plane and along y direction and this will be some vector mutually orthogonal to the others, this is something like this. So if this is along y, if this is along exit plane, and this should be again should be along the exit plane. Why this is done? This is a good tool for determining the polarization of the radiation, like we did in the electric dipole radiation. We divided to the uh, polarization parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. The same thing is done here. So basically, you have the N E parallel and E perpendicular and these are the coordinates and this is the relation is the following. Uh, the relation is the following. What is N cross E perpendicular? N cross E perpendicular is E parallel. N cross E perpendicular is epsilon parallel. Okay? N cross E perpendicular along the epsilon parallel and N cross epsilon N cross epsilon is minus epsilon perpendicular. So is this so? So N cross N cross if you rotate your right hand from N to the E parallel that will be inside the blackboard or if you calculate that the N cross E parallel which is equal to N cross E perpendicular you will obtain what? And that E epsilon perpendicular which will be 0 minus n dot n that is 1 epsilon perpendicular so this is 1 and you can prove this so this is a new coordinates we are writing the coordinates as a epsilon parallel epsilon perpendicular and n so so I am just trying to show you that the geometry and, and then I will just plot the result. So the, what I needed in order to calculate that the energy radiated per frequency per solid angle, I need a velocity. So <clears throat> if you look at the, this from the top view, so rotate this old geometry towards to you, if you look at this from the top view, you have the x, y, and epsilon perpendicular is parallel to the y, and the particle is the some trajectory here. So if you call that this angle, angle as vt over rho, you can call this as angle vt over rho, v is the velocity of the charged particle, then at any location here, at this point, uh, the velocity vector will be something like this. So, this will be the velocity of the charged particle at that location. Rho, if you look at this hole from the top view, and this is the rho again, the charge is moving. If you call this angle is Vt over rho at any time, any, at any time, then you can write, let draw this as the x and y, carry this as parallelly to do that then this will be the velocity and this will be making an angle Vt over rho. So if you investigate the 
geometric properties of this, this angle is equal to this angle. So this is the charge velocity at a given time and you can de define the angle as a Vt over rho and that angle is the same angle of the charge particle is making with the x-axis. So basically knowing this information, knowing this information We can write that the, the velocity in the following form. Magnitude of the velocity along x direction cosine omega t over rho i hat along y direction sine omega t over rho y hat which is equal to epsilon perpendicular. So this is the velocity vector and now I am trying to write this i hat in terms of the other coordinates and epsilon parallel or epsilon perpendicular. So this is not difficult. So the velocity vector here is sine omega t over rho epsilon perpendicular and instead of i hat I can write the following. So let me write that the cosine omega t over rho first and work on the i hat. So i hat is nothing but the following. i hat is a projection of the n hat. i hat is a projection along the epsilon parallel. One is the cosine, the other is the minus sign. Okay, so basically you can write that the i hat, this i hat, n hat cosine theta minus epsilon parallel sine theta, close the parenthesis. So you can take the i hat and projection along the n hat is cosine theta and I know that the epsilon par uh, parallel is perpendicular to n hat therefore the, the sine theta of this i hat will be the uh, will be the minus epsilon parallel and let us go one more step what I needed in this intensity derivation and cross v cross c. So basically you can look at the n cross v. If you look at the n cross v, this n cross n will be the zero and you will obtain v sine omega t uh, v t over rho n cross epsilon uh, cosine vt over rho n cross n is 0 then you have what else n cross epsilon parallel and you have the minus sign here. And n cross epsilon perpendicular is epsilon parallel and n cross epsilon parallel is minus epsilon perpendicular and what I needed there n cross n cross beta then n cross n cross v so beta is v over c is equal to v sine v t over rho n cross epsilon parallel minus cosine v t over rho uh, minus minus is plus so there's minus minus and that will be n cross epsilon perpendicular and again if you look at that n cross parallel is nothing but minus 
minus epsilon perpendicular and n cross perpendicular is epsilon parallel. So, basically this is the piece you have to plug in here and try to evaluate the integral. This piece is depending on the coordinates of what epsilon parallel and epsilon perpendicular. This is important in defining the polarization of the radiation and that depends on the angle, angle depending on time that is reasonable. So, this bunch is depending on time and this is depending on time. You have to evaluate this. So, if you investigate the book, your book Jackson he uses the mathematical methods of uh, physics books, I think one of the popular one. You can look at the references. Uh, basically, the results are coming from the Bessel functions. So, I am not going to touch those things. I am just going to show you the result. <coughs> the result is in the following form. The result of the radiation is in the following form. The energy radiated per frequency per solid angle is described by the omega over, over omega critical frequency. Omega critical frequency is the frequency of the passage time. Basically, there is some in increase. So, let us call this the x or let us call this as a omega over, okay, let us call this the x. So, it's increased as a x to the one third, then decrease as a x to the half divided by e to the x. And somewhere here, is the frequency over frequent critical frequency is equal to the 1 and these are logarithmically plotted the situation is the following ok so basically we have to take this plug in here take the integral and then you can have the radiation pattern and as you see that the, when the frequency passes greater than the critical frequency radiation drops ok all great all radiation is enhanced up to the what critical frequency so if you multiply this h bar and h bar you can represent the ratio as, as a unitly uh, unitless but h omega will be the energy of the photon so this is open to the uh, comparison with the observation if you have a detector okay but if you have a detector you have the intensity as a function of the what energy of photon Okay, and another thing I have to discuss uh, is the following: the polarization of the radiation. If the charge is relativistically moving in the magnetic field is high, the expression for the radiation uh, polarization we did when we study the dipole and quadrupole radiation and so on could be expressed in the following intensity of the em emitted radiation per salt angle per frequency you can decompose in this integral into two pieces one is the E parallel the other is the E perpendicular therefore you can calculate that the intensity of the radiation radiated energy per frequency per, per soft angle is a parallel and perpendicular component so the parallel component minus the perpendicular component divided by the sum of them is defined as a polarization, degree of polarization. Do you remember this formula for the scattering? The same structure. So, this is called as a degree of the polarization for a 
charged particle moving relativistically under the magnetic field, uniform magnetic field, this is very high. It's around 72 percent. So basically, the cyclotron radiation is highly polarized radiation. So enabling the coordinates, defining the coordinates as a perpendicular and parallel, you can determine that the degree of polarization. So the beautiful thing is this, you can have the moving charge particle and we have the point of interest and we are looking at the decomposing the coordinates parallel to the motion, perpendicular to the motion and then you can look at the radiation pattern um, for the uh, parallel to the motion and perpendicular to the motion that could help you that, that define that the polarization. So, experimentally is the, our galaxy has the magnetic flux density at the order of nanotesla, 3 times 10 to the minus 10 tesla, it's very tiny. But using the radio telescopes and so on, people try to get the polarization and try to find that this, the pol this polarization. So, and the pulsars has the high magnetic fields and the charged particles gyrate along the high magnetic fields and it emits radiation and it is cyclotron radiation. Cyclotron radiation is very dominant mechanism in the universe. So, you can look at the book Jackson relevant uh, section and you can plug this here and put it in integral and see that the integral forms it is described in terms of the Bessel functions and the outcome of the radiation is the following. Up to the critical frequency the radiation is dominated then sharply drops. And the critical frequency is the passage time of the radiation burst. So the radiation is emitted for the circular motion and it, so you can see that the radiation in an interval is coming and passing through to your detectors as a burst like shape in a time interval delta t and that inter inverse of this delta t is related with the frequency of the radiation, a frequency, the critical frequency, critical frequency, this one. So these are the definitions and this is the general description of the cyclotron radiation. Now the next thing I want to talk about the Cherenkov radiation. So, for the Cherenkov radiation, we will not look at the intensity spectrum, so we will just look at the condition for the Cherenkov radiation. So, basically the Cherenkov radiation is the following. When the charged particle enters a medium, medium have the in the, vac uh, in the vacuum, the electromagnetic waves propagate its speed of light, but the, in the medium, like in the glass, their phase velocities of the waves are less than speed of light because it the medium has the refractive index. If the charged particle enters the medium, water or ice, whatever, if it moves greater speeds than the speed of light of that medium, the waves are added and we can have the, some shock front and we can see that the burst of the radiation that is called Cherenkov radiation. The analogy in the daily life is the following, you know that the uh, high speed jets uh, like F-16s military base jets. Then when they pass to the speed of the waves of the sound waves of the medium, we can hear a big sound. Okay? And this is the analogy in the for the Cherenkov radiation. The geometrically the situation is the following.
when the charge is resting, it emits waves, like an uh, antenna or whatever. They propagate in the uh, speed of light of the medium. When the charge is propagating, moving, that emits the waves and so when the charge here, the radiation reaches some point there and when the radiation here, when the charge here, the radiation it reaches somewhere here and here reaches somewhere there and here. So all of the circular wave front is added and forms a sh shock front. So this shock front is the shock front of the electromagnetic waves. So if you drop a stone in the water, you will have the some circular waves. But if you drop the stones continuously to the water, what will happen? The waves are added, 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 and you will have the addition of the waves. And at that point, if the char if this is the charge is moving with speed greater than the speed of the let let us say the C tilde. C tilde is the uh, speed of light in the medium. If the charge is moving greater speeds than the speed of light of the medium, all the wave fronts will be added and here you will see a very high disturbance of the molecules of the medium, let's say if it is the water, water molecules. So they will highly disrupted, disrupted, then they will return to the equilibrium con uh, configuration and when they become to the equilibrium con uh, configuration, they emit radiation, the the, they are in the visible, they are blue, bluish. Okay, so the, this is the basic idea and this description is the Huygens description. This is the Huygens principle. So basically the charge is moving and emitting a radiation. That radiation is propagated the speed of light of medium, but the charge is moving greater speed than the speed of light that medium. Okay? Then all waves are add up and we can have the shock. And at that shock we have a large disruption of the molecules and then the molecules um, they are pol molecules are polarized, atoms are polarized, and when they come to the equilibrium configuration, we see that the radiation. If you think about this, not the charge, airplane and the sound waves. So when the airplane passes the speed of, of that medium, we can have the same structure, addition of the sound waves, and we can have the shock cone, and we can see a, hear a great uh, sound. So Cherenkov radiation is important in astrophysics and in high energy physics, in particle physics. So basically <coughs> the, the situation is the following. So at the top of the atmosphere where high energy gamma ray photon enters. So when enters to the atmosphere, uh, what they do, since there are particles, nearby the particles, it creates as a what? Electron positron pair. Then that one of them, they are very highly energetic, greater than moving than the speed of light of the, at, uh, the medium at the atmosphere. Then they emit another gamma ray photon due to the Bramshunt emission, relativistic Bramshunt emission. So when they emit a gamma ray photon due to the relativistic Bramshunt emission, they emit again, they make a, again electron positron pair production. Okay? And this also creates is again electron and positron production. And all of them is moving at greater speeds than the speed of light of that medium or electron and positron pairs. So basically this process is called as a shower. 
So if you have a very high energetic gamma ray photons, then you have the shower of the electron and positrons. So in the mountains or somewhere else, you can set up a Cherenkov detectors. They are basically photomultiplier tubes um, sensitive to the photons. And using the Cherenkov detectors, they detect, they try to detect that the energy of the incoming gamma ray. And another thing it is used in the uh, as a particle physics. For example, in the South Pole, uh, South Pole, uh, there's an ice cube experiment. So in that case, they try to measure the neutrino. So neutrino is has no charge, but interacts with the matter very rarely. But under the, the they dig the, the hole like a 2,000 meter, they are big ice and the detectors there. When the neutrino goes that deep, they interact with the ice molecules of the uh, molecules of the ice and they can create an electron for example. And that electron has the speed greater than speed of light of that medium and they use the Cherenkov detectors and, and they try to detect the uh, neutrino. They are neutrino emissions are very rare, maybe 10 or 20 they observe, not much. So these are the basic processes. So if the charged particle is moving greater speed that uh, speed of light, light of that medium, it emits uh, Cherenkov radiation. So how we can take into account are this formula here. So that is very simple. This formula tells you that the intensity per energy per radiation, energy per frequency per salt angle, and that propagates with the speed of light. In the in the matter, this C, this C will be replaced by C bar. Okay? And ignore this term, our coefficients. And the charge is moving with constant velocity. Therefore, n cross beta is nothing but v sine theta and is the point of interest. And n cross of that is perpendicular to n cross is perpendicular to n cross beta. So basically, this term only produces sine square theta. But what is inside there? What is inside here? So inside here I have, we have I omega t. Okay, they do one more step. What is R? What is R? R is nothing but the position of the charged particle. That is nothing but Vt. Vt, velocity times t. So basically, you can write this integral as one minus n dot v over c tilde. c tilde is the speed of light in the matter. And take the t parenthesis. And then dt, and then you have the square of this. So basically, if you look at here, what you are seeing, what you are seeing, what is this? This is the definition of the delta function. So that tells you that this integrals will survive when omega minus n dot v over c bar. So let's say that the speed of light in matter. So basically, that tells you that delta function omega 1 minus n dot v over c bar should be zero. If this is zero, this delta function will be non-zero, and then you will have the radiation. So what is this condition? And that is very interesting. So what is this? This whole thing should be zero in order to get a non-zero result. So that tells you that this implies that omega in both sides, one minus, what is n dot v? and that V is nothing but V cosine theta divided by C bar 
have to be equal to zero. So that means that the following. So that means that the cosine theta. So omega is is same everywhere. Is equal to c bar c tilde over v. So what is this? So at this angle, uh, the radiation is not zero. What is this angle? So what is the c tilde? C tilde is nothing but speed of light or refractive index. Take the measure as the same. So what does it mean? So think about the case the following. In vacuum, if you think about the vacuum, n is 1. C is greater than V. This cosine theta is less than 1, but C over V is greater than 1. That means that in the vacuum, the moving charge particle doesn't radiate. But if you think about, for example, in think about the glass, glass. Do you know that the refractive of index of the glass? Two or three, two, two, two. I don't know, maybe one half, something like this. It's greater than one, it should be. It should be great. Yes, that is possible, one, 1 1.5 maybe. And if the speed of the charged particle is, let's say, 0.9 C, then you obtain what? You obtain uh, what? A number less than one. So that means that at that angle, we will observe the Cherenko radiation. So basically, the condition for the Cherenko radiation is the following. So, so this is nothing but V times T, and the charge is moving, and this angle the perpendicular line to the shock front is the Cherenkov angle and that angle is the this part. So this is the theta and that theta is equal to what? Uh, cosine minus one uh, or cosine theta is equal to uh, C over M over V. So that angle is determined by C over N V. And as you see that this formula is very nicely explaining that the Cherenkov radiation condition. First, in the medium, the speed, the, the information is uh, distributed with the speed light, speed of light of the medium, that is C bar. And then the charge is moving some constant velocity. And then you can obtain a condition such that this integral, and you know that the, this integral is the delta function, and this integral will be non-zero unless the argument of the delta function is zero. That gives you that the Cherenkov angle. In vacuum, we don't have the Cherenkov radiation or the Cherenkov radiation, Cherenkov angle and the Cherenkov radiation. But in matter, if you satisfy the criteria of this is less than one you can obtain the Cherenkov radiation. So this is very important for determining the, the radiation of the high gamma rays in the atmosphere. They are the cosmic rays. And it is very important to determine the neutrino emission. They build up the Cherenkov detectors under the ground. So after a short break, I will discuss about the Thomson scattering and their radiation reaction force.